In 1991 Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Glenda Cleveland is at home watching the news when she hears her neighbor Jeffrey Dahmer, using power tools just next door. Jeff goes to his sink to clean his red tools. He leaves his apartment and in the hallway, Glenda complains about the smell coming from his apartment. Jeff lies, and tells her his meat went bad. Glenda is annoyed because he threw out a bunch of meat just the other day. Jeff lies again, and tells her that the smell must be his dead fish. As he walks closer to Glenda, Glenda is visibly afraid of him. Eventually Jeff leaves the building. There's a bunch of missing poster signs of black men near a gay club called Club 219. At the club, he meets with acquaintances, including Tracy Edwards. He dances with Tracy and dances the night away. Then he asks the men if any of them want to model for him for $50. Tracy is the only one out of the three that agrees to this. Tracy and Jeff leave the club and go to his apartment. Tracy is hesitant at first, but eventually goes inside. He immediately notices the bad smell in Jeff's apartment. The camera pans to a drill with some blood on it. Then Jeff locks the door. Jeff grabs a beer, and we see a man's head on the bottom of the fridge. He pours a drink for Tracy. Tracy notices his drink is very bubbly and is suspicious of it, and only takes a sip. He wants to leave, but Jeff tells him not to leave. He even blocks the door to keep him from leaving. Tracy acts calmly the entire time, until suddenly Jeff puts him in handcuffs. Tracy calls for help, then Jeff tackles him down then threatens him with a machete. Meanwhile, Glenda can hear the muffled conversation next door. Jeff threatens Tracy to go into the bedroom. Tracy sits on the bed, while Jeff turns on a movie. Tracy asks what the barrel in the corner is for. Tracy is afraid so he tries to leave, but Jeff stops him. Tracy sees the blood on the mattress and is afraid for his life. For survival, Tracy calms himself down, and tries to seduce Jeff. It only works a little before Jeff gets suspicious. By this time, Jeff expects Tracy to be fully drugged, but Tracy only took a small sip of his drink, so Tracy is fully awake. Tracy tells Jeff that he should take photos of him. Using his dance moves to seduce him. Jeff then goes to the other room to grab the camera. Just as Tracy is about to rush to leave, Jeff is already back with the camera. Jeff takes a couple of photos then tells Tracy that they need to go back in the room to watch the movie. Tracy is very scared. Jeff moves closer to Tracy to listen to his heartbeat. He tells Tracy that he's going to eat his heart. Eventually, Tracy is able to smash Jeff's head with a lampshade and tries to escape. He has trouble with the locked door and Jeff is able to catch him. Luckily Tracy is able to hit him again then finally escapes, screaming for help. Glenda looks out the hallway and sees Jeff, but immediately goes back inside. Tracy runs outside screaming for help while Jeff nonchalantly goes back into his apartment. Cops finally find Tracy in the alleyway, but they're a bit suspicious of him, especially since he has handcuffs on. The two cops approach Tracy readying their guns at their holsters, and Tracy tries to explain the situation. The two cops, along with Tracy, go to Jeff's apartment. Jeff tries to lie his way out of it. The cops ask for the keys to the handcuffs and asks if they can go into the apartment. Jeff surprisingly lets them in, and the cops are immediately repulsed by the smell. One of the cops goes into his bedroom to look for the keys and notices the blood on the mattress, and the large barrel. Jeff tries to go into the dresser where the handcuff keys are, but the cop decides to do it. He finds the key, but also finds photos of dead men. Jeff tries to escape, but the cops arrest him. Tracy is relieved. Jeff whispers for the things he's done, he should be dead. The neighbors all gather to watch Jeff get arrested. Glenda yells at the cops, saying she kept calling them and the cops never did anything about Jeff. She wonders what the cops found in his apartment. Jeff's father Lionel, goes to the police station, and the police have to give him the bad news. Lionel admits that his son was always a strange boy. He mentioned the divorce negatively affecting Jeff when he was just 18. Lionel thinks Jeff's hernia operation may have caused brain damage. Lionel assumes Jeff only attempted to kill Tracy. The cops tell him that Jeff committed multiple murders. They tell him there was a human head in the refrigerator. Two plastic bags in the freezer containing a human heart, one that has male genitalia. In the bedroom, there were five skulls, knives, hammers, Polaroids documenting everything. And a 57-gallon barrel filled with acid. Inside were three torsos and other body parts. They also tell him that Jeffrey ate some of his victims. The cops leave Lionel and he immediately cries. Meanwhile, Glenda snoozes as the news reports about Dahmer. She sees a ton of people flocking around the apartment building. Then cops tell everyone at the apartment complex that they need to leave because the entire building is a crime scene. 
news reporters are covering Jeffrey Dahmer's crimes. All victims were men. The news even wonders how Jeff was able to keep committing these crimes when he was a convicted child sex offender. Meanwhile, Jeff is booked and sits with detectives to tell them all of his crimes. They wonder why Jeff committed all the crimes and wonder why he kept the body parts. In 1966, a young Jeffrey Dahmer rides the bus home. His baby brother David, is crying at home while his mom Joyce, is laying in bed almost dead. She tried to unalive herself but luckily Jeff called the ambulance. Lionel comes home and says Joyce is just doing it for attention. Later, Joyce and Lionel fight because Lionel is never home. Lionel criticizes Joyce for constantly being on medication. Jeff gives his teacher a jar of tadpoles as a gift. One of the kids, Kevin, gets the jar of tadpoles from the teacher. Then later Jeff screams at Kevin for taking the jar from the teacher. After school, Jeff follows Kevin home and steals the jar. He decides to pour motor oil into the jar and watches the tadpoles slowly dying. One afternoon, Lionel finds a dead opossum under their house. Jeff is very curious about the dead animal. Eventually, Jeff gets so serious he wants to get into taxidermy, so his dad shows him the ropes. They go around looking for roadkill to dissect. They play with the raccoon's intestine and heart. Sometime in 1981, in Miami, Jeff works at a deli cutting meat. We find out that Jeff was discharged from the army. His dad allows Jeff to move back home. His dad picks him up at the airport, and tells him he's going to stay with his grandma but he must abide by her rules and must get a job. At dinner, his grandma tries to get Jeff to meet girls and tries to get him out of the house to socialize. The next day, Jeff has a job at a butcher's shop. He has to go shopping for a dress shirt for work. And while paying, he notices a muscular male mannequin. Instead of leaving the store, he goes to the dressing room to hide. Once everyone has left for the night, he packs up the mannequin to steal and brings it home. He undresses and puts the mannequin on the bed while talking to it, and starts to touch the mannequin inappropriately. The next day, he asks his grandma to not go into his room and leave his laundry just outside. Of course his grandma is super curious now, and is creeped out when she sees the mannequin. The movie then transitions to 1991, when Jeffrey Dahmer ended one of his victims who is now laying in bed. Later that night, Jeff sees a bunch of kids and charms one of them named, Connerake. He tells Connerake that he'll pay him good money to model. At his apartment, Connerake drinks some beer that Jeff gives him. Connerake admits that he's only 14 years old. Then Connerake reveals that he's Somsack's brother, the underage boy that Jeff Dahmer got arrested for touching. Jeff is upset about this. He then tells Connerake to keep drinking and persuades him to chug his drink down. Once drugged out, Jeff takes photos. Connerake tries to get away but is unable to. Connerake's eyes are all white now. Then Jeff goes to grab the power drill. Connerake is still somewhat awake, but is unable to move. Eventually Connerake is able to get up and he slowly moves to leave the apartment. In the hallway, two girls see Connerake and wonder what's going on. Later, Jeff comes back to the apartment building to see Connerake with Glenda, the two girls and two cops. Jeff lies and says Connerake is his boyfriend, but Glenda doesn't believe him because Connerake looks way too young. The two teenage girls try to tell the cops that the boy is bleeding. Jeff lies again and tells them his boyfriend fell, and is always drunk. The cops try to ask the kid how old he is. And Jeff tries to reassure them that Connerake is 19 years old. The cops agree to bring Connerake and Jeff back into the apartment. Glinda tries to argue with them but they don't listen to her. At the apartment, the cops wonder if Jeff has anything weird in the apartment. The cops are afraid that they might catch AIDS, so they're not really into searching the apartment. The cops briefly peek into the room where a dead black man lay on the floor. The cops leave and tells Jeff to take care. One of the cops says they gotta go home to take a shower now, afraid that they might have caught something. Jeff then closes the door and finishes the job. Meanwhile, Glenda is shocked the police just left and she hears loud music and power tools coming from next door. On May 27, 1991, we hear Glenda's actual police call. She wonders what happened with Connerake, and if they confirmed his actual age. The police informs her that Connerake is an adult and Jeff's boyfriend. This was just the second episode of the series. It really shows how the police failed people by not listening to people of color, and also how homophobia played into their negligence. The series is going viral right now and does a really good job at highlighting the victim's experience as well. You guys should really check it out on Netflix. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.